Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Hunt for Bronze today. I'm out at beautiful Maroon Dam. Um, we're going to try, obviously, for some bass if you know the place. Uh, if not, it's uh, one of the many stocked impoundments in southeast Queensland that is relatively close to home for me. Um, we're doing an Arvo session, which is odd of me. I don't normally do Arvo sessions. I'm no, a morning session kind of guy, and I gen generally prefer fishing in the morning. But um, this morning was ice cold. It like, was like one degree negatives. Uh, so I thought I'd wait until the sun to warm up the water and hopefully warm up the fishing. I'm going to leave it at that. We're going to put you on the chest, start, and go find fish. We're going to fish the weed edges here. It's got a good weed edge, but there's also probably going to be some deeper weed and fish hanging in school. So we'll try everything, give everything a go, and we'll run down fishing this dam how I looked at it. Let's go. All right, so we're just doing a bit of a, a sound around at the moment, finding where that weed edge is. And oop, there's some fish hanging right on the bottom there. You can see them on the sonar. And now on the down scan as well, just about where that weed will start. So if I push up this way, you should start seeing the weed. Being a newly flooded dam, as you can see with the timber there, but that's a weed. So it's sitting pretty deep, which will make it a bit harder to fish almost. Um, we may not get the jerkbait bite that I like, but we'll give it a go. Um, we'll also fish all this freshly flooded stuff, particularly the Savo. But as you can see there, a couple of bits of timber in here, all the way to the left of me and right of me on the side scan. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to push us over. May even just start fishing, you know. We're not even that far from the ramp, but I might just start on this sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, let's give it a go. Why not? And we'll fish kind of in this little bay here and then up to that, over to that point over there. Yeah, give it a go. So there's gonna be uh, a double-sided weed wall here. So we're gonna have the weed wall that's out into the open, but also the weed wall that's on the other side in the freshly flooded stuff. And what that's gonna provide is the bass, two avenues to, to eat in. Which, oh, hit. I just had a hit, that was a bass too. As it popped out of that weed, watched him flash on it. What I noticed was a lot of little black baby something. So I've tied this on. See if he's still there and wants to have another go. Okay, so we swapped over from the squash shard to this little flash J. I'm just excuse me, I'll turn the back camera. Um, it's actually on my little painted up jig heads I've uh, I've done recently. Tried to get as close to the um, to the old camo bloody who's a jubits as possible. Um, Berkeley Dam Deep, seeing as they don't make them anymore. So we'll see how we go. I'm just going to cast it over and slow roll it through the weed up here on the edge. Just have a bit more action than the uh, than the squash shard for this sort of fishing up here, so I can slowly roll it through instead of that jerking action. Mind you, the jerking action might actually be good for the fish, so we could get to that. We might go back to it. We might. Perfect. All we're just going to do is cast up into this shallow stuff and slow roll it out. Yeah, 
just keep it ticking over and through the weed. Targeting these edges. The joy to this though is that I can cast it to both sides of me. Let it sink down this side and bring it back up the weed face or cast it and bring it up that weed face. I'm kind of almost on top of the weed. So noting how tall that tree is and how deep that water looks should take a little bit of time. There we go, it's hit the bottom. And, oh, fish right next to that tree. Oh, a bit of dig to him. Not big though. Don't think he's big at all. Oh, look, he's not big, but he's not bad. He's actually not bad. <laughs> right next to that tree. You know what? I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining with that. He isn't huge, but he's got a big motor on him. And the new jig head strikes. How cool. There we go. He'd be a low 30s to the fork. Yep, 31 to the fork model. But he has a big tail for a small fish. Look at that. It's a good little motor. How cool is that? On that new painted jig head. And one fish. So I seem to be sounding a lot of fish right on the edge of the weed. Um, you can see here, you can see all the weed that I'm currently on. And then as I go to the edge of it, you'll see. Oh, there was a hit. And there's the edge ish. There'll probably be fish in amongst this. So I'll just cast the plastic over. And let it sink a little bit. Yeah, you can see on the side scan, just a couple of, couple of couplers, couple of fish there. So if you feel yourself load up on the, on the weed, a good way to fish weed beds like this, is if you feel yourself load up on the weed, give your rod tip a little pop. And that kind of just, as it suggests, pops the lure out of the weed. Um, I can actually also often turn on a bit of a reaction strike. So, it's always worth just giving your rod tip a little bit of it. If you're stuck in weed, because you might find that it results in a fish or two. Hit, or hit, fish. Slow rolling that plastic through them. Good fun around this weed because they go for it. Not huge. But, on that flash day, coolio. That new painted jig head, and two inch flash day, great combo. And match with this really light ACM two to six pound. Um, as you can see from the tip, I don't know, hopefully that camera can see, but it's quite a soft tip. So if I bring that down here, you can see that's the tip's quite soft, and as I was getting those little little bites just then, 
that plastic didn't get pulled out of his face. And as you can see, it's quite a good hook up there. That's a really positive hook up. Um, it allow, allowed him to eat it. And he's got that little right there. And he'd be a low 30s fish. Not huge, but hey. We ticked, ticked another one off. But we'll cast back out. And repeat. We'll do the same thing. So let's see if rolling this back up there gets another one. Yep. Oh. I lifted too soon on that one instead of um, letting the fish take it. Like that. There we go. That's him. Nah, he just looked bigger. Might be a tiny bit bigger. Nah, he's not. They're all the same, this same sort of size. But hey. Banging them. Banging them. That jig head, right in the top of the mouth. That. And that's how uh, lightly they were hooked. That's why you gotta keep that pressure on them. Nice little fatty. <laughs> so back out we go let's see let's see if that school's still there okay let's go through the setup now that we've caught a few fish and we've got i'm not gonna say we've worked them out but we've caught what three fish out of this little school here um and one fish on a tree so this is my light soft plastic setup that i love dearly um i kind of really refined what rod and everything i wanted at lake st clair and glenbourne dam to throw plastics on bass during the cooler months and that's a i like a six foot ten um spinning rod two to six pound uh two to six pound rod with a slower taper. So not this super crisp, super quick, um, I guess high modulus graphite. I actually prefer a slower, slower modulus rod with a parabolic bend, being bend that, rod that bends through the whole blank for this sort of fishing. Um, it is a pretty specific or technique specific setup but it also works pretty damn well on crankbaits and top waters for brim. So if you are after kind of this sort of setup, it's a hunt for bronze, ACM custom, um, matched with a 2000 size Daiwa reel. I bought this cause I like the look of it. Sue me. No, don't. I, I, I bought this reel because I thought it looked cool and I could get the double swept handles in the color that matches it. Um, five pound Power Pro, that's all I use, Power Pro, Power Pro Brave. Um, if anyone wants to prove me wrong as to why this is not as good as anything else, uh, send me a spool, <laughs> jokes. I am talking some utter crap right now, uh, but I've matched this FG knot to a almost a three, two to three rod length leader. A uh, bit of extra stretch in that fluoro is pretty important as well for this, this style of fishing. Um, and then when I'm throwing the crankbaits for brim, that extra stretch and invisibility is also pretty good. Um, come on, sink. It's not, I'm talking, so I'm impatient. Uh, and then, yeah, as I said, I'm casting off the weed. I'm actually sitting on top of it, casting off the weed, letting plastic sink to the bottom and just slow rolling it back. And it's worked. Like, and I'm talking slow enough that you can feel it just dragging through that weed, dragging over that structure at the bottom. It's a pretty killer technique and it seems stupid and simple but it works. Mm, 
tempted to crack out a quarter ounce and just see if I can get it to hold down there where I want it to a bit more. Hit. Hit. Fish. That was a solid dunk, that first one. I just needed to get the boat in a better position, that's all. Actually, it doesn't feel like too bad of a fish. Jeez, he's just got some go about him. Look how quick that line's cutting. He's a dark weed dweller. He's all right. Just hit the old spot lock there. Not a bad little battler. Again, they're all that similar 30 centimeter rod size. Oh, you didn't like that. Ah, 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 ah. That's that little bronze battler. See you, mate. Hit fish. There we go. There we go. I don't think he's a big in, but he's, he's digging. Digging. Well, he actually might not be too bad. He's straight in that weed. Might not be a bad one, actually. Nah, still about the same size. Hey, but it's a bass. Ah, there we go. Oh, that's an absolute piggy. He is a pig. He's a little round fish. Look at the guts on him. Like, look at that. Look how fat he is. Like, if that's not a fat bass, I don't know what is. And he is well hooked. It's not an overly huge fish by any stretch of the imagination. But geez. He is fat, so fat. How cool. God, I love these little guys. Flash day shad. Rigging her up a nice freshy for the next probably hour of fishing. If that. Bang. Oh, please be straight. It is getting a bit chilly. We're going to throw the jumper on and crack the afternoon to a tea. Deal with that tomorrow. Yeah, on. No way. No way. Gave up on one. Picked up a... Uh... <laughs> Picked up the cord rounds and just burnt it in the shallow water. And... Uh, oh, look. That might just be the best of the day, but he ain't huge, but he's one. Because if that's the last fish, 
least we got one more. <laughs>